Today, the IDF revealed a network of tunnels that is a central part of Hamas's method of operation and includes essential and strategic centers of gravity for the terrorist organization. Meanwhile, near Jerusalem, Hamas terrorists who arrived by car began firing automatic weapons at vehicles standing in a traffic jam. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on this 139th day of the Hamas-Israel war. This morning, Hamas staged an attack against Israeli civilians in our capital city, Jerusalem. It happened at the main entry to the city from the Dead Sea in the eastern part of Israel. Three Hamas terrorists arrived by car, exited their vehicle, and began randomly firing their weapons at people sitting in the early morning traffic. One Israeli was killed in the attack and nine others were wounded. Let me help you understand what it was like. Imagine you are sitting in a traffic somewhere in the city with your children in the car. It's a busy morning and your mind is focused on thoughts about work, your children's school activities, or maybe a repair you need to have done to your home. Suddenly, someone drives up, crashes their car into another car in order to create a roadblock and prevent other cars from leaving the area, then gets out of their vehicle and just starts opening fire at you and your children. This is the situation faced by Israelis this morning in Jerusalem at a busy intersection where hundreds of vehicles passed in and out every morning. All three terrorists who participated in this attack were quickly neutralized by security forces, but security officials are worried that this method of attacking civilians when they're trapped in traffic at busy intersections will become more common. It will be difficult to defend civilians against such an attack just as it was difficult to defend against fast bombings that were common in the Second Intifada 20 years ago. I was a child growing up in Jerusalem 20 years ago, and I very well remember the suicide attacks against buses, cafes, bus stops, and schools. Dozens of my childhood friends were either killed or wounded by these terrorist attacks. I grew up under Islamic terror as a child, and I do not want my own children to have the same experience. For years, me and my generation fought so that our children would not have to fear dying when they get on a bus or sit inside a cafe drinking coffee. It's important to take note of the fact that this act came about two weeks before the start of Ramadan, the Islamic festival, which is traditionally a point in time with many security challenges. Police are always on high alert during this time and the security establishment fears riots flaring up during the month of Ramadan, especially this year. The war in Gaza has inflamed tensions and led to a higher than usual risk of an explosion. Please be in prayer for us that we can save our children from this horrible experience that I went through as a child of living in fear of terrorist attacks when I went to the school taking the bus every day. Keep spreading the truth, share and follow us and keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem now more than ever. Shifting focus now to the Gaza Strip, where IDF forces under the command of Division 98 uncovered a tunnel more than a kilometer long that was used by senior Hamas officials. Upon entering the network of the tunnels, the fighters encountered the side doors and barriers placed by the terrorists in order to defend this space from outside forces. But the IDF troops broke through these barriers, engaged several terrorists in close quarter battles, and eliminated them. The route was investigated and intelligence materials and electricity, including water infrastructure, were found inside this tunnel. This tunnel was filled with weapons and intelligence materials, and according to estimates, millions of dollars 
were invested in building it. The intelligence materials that were recovered from these tunnels are immensely valuable to Israel's mission of eliminating the threat of Hamas and returning our hostages. And the loss of the use of this tunnel is a big blow to Hamas. But this is actually the second raid this month on a strategic tunnel used by senior Hamas officials. At the beginning of the month, the IDF raided another tunnel where senior Hamas officials were staying and even held hostages inside. The fighters who raided the tunnel engaged terrorists in a face-to-face -face battle, broke through the top doors and neutralized explosive charges. They also discovered many different underground chambers used by the organization since the outbreak of the war on October 7. Among other things, a prison room was discovered in an area with bars where about 12 abductees were held at different times. Three of them returned to Israel and the rest are still held in the Gaza Strip. This chamber included sleeping areas, bathrooms, facilities for cooking, and of course, various intelligence materials and means of warfare that were used by the terrorist organization Hamas. Like so many other terror tunnels, this one was located underneath the heart of a civilian area in Khan Yunis, so that an attack against it would be sure to produce civilian casualties, which Hamas could then exploit for propaganda purposes. This strategic tunnel is part of a branching underground network and is connected to a tunnel that was uncovered a few weeks ago where more hostages were held. The war in the Gaza Strip will likely continue for many more months, if not longer, and this is almost certain to lead to a full-scale war between Israel and Hezbollah in the north. There is a close connection between these two terrorist organizations. You might be wondering what makes me so sure there will be a war with Hezbollah in the north. First of all, this is a natural development following the escalation that we see every day. Even if there will not be a full escalation, we have heard the mayors of the cities of northern Israel warn that they cannot hold out and stay in their communities as long as the situation is like this. I obviously do not want this big war in the north to happen, but I simply don't see any scenario where it doesn't happen. So please, now more than ever, I'm asking you to help us spread the truth share and follow us on social media, send these videos to your elected officials, and tell everybody that needs to know the truth what really is happening here in Israel, so that they can join us in prayer for the situation. And we believe that God is in control here in Lebanon, in the Gaza Strip, and in the entire world. So thank you for uniting with us in prayer.